In this video, I will explain how daylight systems work and how to use them to your advantage when pre-lighting without radiosity. As explained in the previous guide, Guide 95, there are two methods of pre-lighting in 3DS Max, using the old scanline lighting for direct light rays and using its radiosity functionality for physically based indirect illumination. There are cases where using radiosity provides little to no added pre-light detail, and so it is important to know how to pre-light without understanding the complexities of radiosity. I will be using two types of daylight systems in this video, the default daylight system and the custom daylight setup used in previous video. To reiterate, because we cannot create indirect illumination without using radiosity, we need to fake it ourselves by means of adding extra light sources to our scene. If you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work, set to max legacy and restart 3DS Max. I'll load in a model from the game that I think is suitable for this guide. If you take a look around, there will be some Z fighting which we can fix by enabling backface culling for the object. I'll bring up the materials toggle interface to easily switch between materialized and non-materialized display in viewport. This will allow you to easily see the lighting that will end up being stored in the model. Let's begin with the default daylight system. This system is a sunlight and skylight packaged together with some controls for setting the time of day. This can be useful if you are wanting an accurate time of day configuration. One thing to keep in mind about the sunlight is that it is not an actual sun, but rather a targeted direct light. The skylight is a regular skylight. This means you could create a daylight system yourself if you wanted. I'll add the daylight system to my scene. It's asking if I want to enable the physical exposure control. I'll say no because I want to use the logarithmic exposure control instead. Enable lighting in viewport. You will notice the lighting looks way overexposed, and that is because the daylight system controls the light intensity by its date and time settings. We therefore need to use an exposure control to lower the light intensity. You can use any exposure control you prefer, but I'll keep mine as logarithmic. Press 8 on your keyboard to access the exposure interface. To get the intended exposure, we need to set it as exterior daylight. It's important to know that different types of exposure models work differently. For example, physical control has a temperature setting which can be handy when you want your lighting to have a colored tone. The logarithmic control has a color overlay, but it is not always accurate when selecting the color you are wanting to overlay. If you have other lights in your scene, such as point or direct lights, then they will also be affected by the exposure control. It is therefore important that you set your individual light intensities while the exposure control is active. If you look around the model, you may notice some odd shading. There are a few ways to fix this. The go-to way of doing it is adding a smooth modifier and setting the angle of smoothing to 30 or less. When we do that, we get worse shading. If we lower it down, it won't really fix anything. Instead, we can use weighted normals modifier. This modifier is not available in all versions of Max, but you can also fix it by changing smoothing groups manually. In the modifier, I'll set it as edge angle of 30. The shading looks better now. I want the lighting to hit the model from one of the sides rather than from directly above. I'll therefore set the time of day to something like three in the afternoon. If you're not seeing the daytime controls, make sure to select the daylight group or one of the lights individually the reason the other side of the building is much darker now is that the sunlight only casts direct light rays. It is therefore not seeing the polygons on the other side. As we have no models in the scene to reflect indirect light rays back onto the other side, the only illumination it's receiving is from the skylight. The skylight illuminates objects from 360 degrees. When not using radiosity, this light is our global illumination source. If we turn it off, any polygon that isn't directly hit by the sunlight will be pitch black. It is possible to adjust the intensity of the skylight. If I set it much higher, you'll notice everything goes much brighter. The faces that are directly hit by the sun won't inherit much skylight, but will still be a little brighter. The skylight is therefore not a great way of adding global illumination because it alters the global contrast of our lighting 
and makes it look more washed out, because it's just adding a flat color to all polygons. It is possible to change the exposure using exposure control. It is also possible to adjust the intensity of the sunlight, but not in an ordinary way. You would have to adjust the color value itself, but this is not recommended. We can also change the direction of the sunlight without typing in a different time of day. However, I prefer keeping these values default. If we need to adjust the sun intensity manually, then we can set the daylight controls as manual. We can now change the intensity and position of the daylight system to our likings. Manually moving around the daylight system can be useful if you really want to fine-tune the daylight illumination. But you could also use the day and time controls and adjust the latitude, longitude, and north direction values. When the lighting looks good, assign it to Vertex Color Channel. Due to a limitation with Max, we first need to disable lighting in Viewport. I could call this job done, but I want a bit more control over my final lighting composition. I'll therefore split each light into separate passes so that I can composite them later. I'll create a base white to remove the original vertex colors. I'll then turn off sunlight and assign the sky lighting to vertex colors. I'll then turn off skylight, turn on sun, and assign the sunlighting to vertex colors. Finally, I can adjust the blend modes, opacities, and coloro values of each pre-light layer to suit my style. This might look somewhat good, but we are still missing a lot of light information in the indirectly lit areas. I'll therefore delete my daylight system and remove my pre-light layers. As explained in the previous video, it is possible to create a custom daylight system consisting of five direct lights, which act as direct sunlights and indirect sunlights, and then one skylight to bring in some blue shade. For this method, we don't need to use exposure control. You can keep it if you wish, but I'll deactivate it. The reason I am setting the target distance and hotspot and fall off to lowest values possible is just to keep viewport looking clean. I'll name the lights in a way that makes sense. For example, the direct light that is lighting directly down will be named top, because the view cube also is named top. This may seem like a lot of work when lighting just one model, but we can save the setup and load it into any other scene we may need to pre-light another time. The idea with this setup is that we have five sunlights. 
where some meant to act as direct sun and the rest to act as indirect sunlight. To reiterate, because we are not using radiosity for global illumination, we need to use these extra lights to bring in lighting where surfaces are not being directly hit by our main sun, but are indirectly lit by light that bounces off surrounding buildings. I think this lighting looks good enough, and so I'll assign it to vertex colors. Like before, I'll assign each light type as a separate pass for best control and composition. I think this looks much better than the default daylight system. As a final touch, I can make the pre-light look more stylish, similarly to how it would look with radiosity. The pre-light is now done. This should cover the basics of daylight systems. As a last note for this video, I want to talk about scripted daylight systems. In today's world, we often use HDRIs in production, but in the old days, artists commonly used scanline renderer and radiosity for lighting. However, Radiosity can be very slow to set up and calculate, so that is where scripts can come in handy. There are many HDR or dome light scripts on the internet, but the one with most features and easy to use is featured in Scott Onstott's video, which talks about using scripted dome lights with scanline renderer. Although Scott has already made a video on this script, I would like to feature it in this video as well. To get started, download the script from ScriptSpot. If you click the link, it'll show the raw text of the code. Select all the code and control C. In any folder in your PC, like your downloads folder, create a new text file and name it something descriptive. Give it a .ms extension, which is short for MacScript. Open the script and control V. Move the script into your 3DS Max script startup folder. The reason I am not creating the script there is because of device permissions. I could as well have created the script from within Max, but that isn't as intuitive. 
In 3DS Max, I have already imported a few models. Run the script, locate the dome light, and create it in your scene. Find an image you would like to be plugged into the dome light. I'll use Pixabay to locate a free image. Drag the image into a new material. Unlock the ambient map slot as that is needed for this dome to work. Scale the dome so that the model is well within the dome, but don't worry too much about its size, just as long as it's big enough. It's okay to leave some room between the bottom of the dome and the bottom of your models. When the dome is positioned where it should, we can just hide it. I'll set my dome multiplier as 0.45, which is also the ambient value used in vehicle materials, and tend to look fine. When ready to test how it looks, turn off materials in viewport and enable lighting. To see the lights, First click Generate Lights. If it looks bad or dark, try increasing the amount of lights in your scene. That way, it'll have more pixels in your image to sample from. If it's very dark, it may only be sampling from buildings. To see the effects, we first need to click Update, and then generate the lights again. Updating and regenerating is required whenever you want to change something. That is because the lights are required to be generated for both displaying lighting and viewport but also to assign to vertex colors. If you find you're getting two sudden changes in light intensities and colors, then you can try changing the dome light sampling and other settings. It can also help to blur the image to average out the colors and make any changes less noticeable. I think it looks good enough, and so I'll just assign it to vertex colors. If you want shadows, then you can also include them when assigning. If you're seeing some faceted shading, then that can be fixed by auto-smoothing the mesh.